Hello Crafters. This is Raquel with Paints and Glitter. I am going to try to go live here and I'm going to try to find my own video as I've done in the past. I think, is this upside down? Yes it is. <laughs> I don't know why that just happened. <laughs> okay, I am going to fix that. Interesting. Okay, if you're just joining me and re-watching this, please go ahead and uh, just skip through this part. It's always the fun part of me doing a little bit of fiddling around here for the camera, and I'm hoping I can fix this. Okay, I think that was painless. Let's see. I'm going to wait a moment here to see if anyone comes along. I do see someone here, so if you could say hello. I'm going to try to zoom as I typically do, you know, make sure the camera's pointing the right way and all that good stuff. And then I'll get started once my camera's situated. But my name is Raquel. If you're new to my channel, this is Paints and Glitter. And today I'm going to be working with Tonic Studios dies to create a cute little card. And I see that my camera needs to be moved a little bit more. So I do appreciate your patience while I get this situated. If you're watching. Okay, and I see that someone... Hello, Rita! Rita, bienvenida if you speak Spanish. <laughs> um, I'm going to try to situate this so that the... Let's see here, that light's not bothering us. Maybe I don't even need to turn it on. Let me see. No, I do need it. I'm going to oh, try to make this bearable. <laughs> okay, or maybe I can just tilt my camera this way a tiny bit. All right, so before I begin, if you want to, in the description bar of this video, as I always do, I just ask that you click on one of my links to support my channel. It really helps. And it won't be in the chat because, unfortunately, I'm still unable to enter my own chat. <laughs> but if you want to do that, I would truly appreciate it. And I'm going to be sharing with you the die set that I'll be working with today. Um, I had hoped to do a different style of video today. And I'm so sorry that I... Hello, Melissa! That I won't be doing... Uh, I, I thought I'd be doing flowers today, but I'm not. I'm just going to be doing a card. But it's not just a card, of course, because when you're using absolutely fabulous dies, then it makes it a bit extra special. Now, today I'm using the Bountiful Bell Jar Die and Stencil Set. And this is a really cute set that Tonic Studios released not too long ago. And it does have 46 dies. I'm going to share with you what they are and, of course, the stencils. Because it's not every day that Tonic Studios releases a set of dies with coordinating stencils. Now, what I'll say about the stencils is that they, this is how they come. I haven't even opened the package yet. And they are really cute because you can use them on both sides. And not all stencils are like that. And I thank you so much for the thumbs up. And I'll explain what I mean by that. In fact, I should have grabbed some... Um, well, if you guys want me to, after I make the card, I can, um, you know, do a little playing with this if if there's time for it. But here's one of the stencils. It has, you know, it looks like leaves, right? Depending on how you look at that. And then there's this one with the little hearts. And then stippling in a crosshatch pattern there. And then, of course, um, the um, the pattern here can be combined with others. So there's this one here, and I'm grabbing all of them backwards, but there's this one here that they look almost like little flowers and then little dots in the center. But you can combine them with the others because of the way the patterns fall. So you can have a play with that. And then lastly, there's this one here, and it's the same thing. Depending on how you flip the stencil, you're going to get a different look. And of course, if you use it horizontally after applying it vertically, you'll get another look even still, which is super cool. And the same, you know, goes for the other ones. You can get quite creative with these. So those are the stencils included. 
Then there is the actual die set. Comes with three separate sentiments that you can use. Typically, uh, Tonic Studios will do two different st uh, styles of sentiments in a die set. One of them will be that the word will cut out of the background. That's your typical sentiment. And then the other style will be what you see here, which are these little flat dies that have the sentiment in the center, and they actually emboss into your paper or deboss the paper. And this one says, time to celebrate. The other one says, my sweet friend. And the third says, live life full bloom. And that might seem a little strange, but I'll explain in a moment why that one actually does make sense. Now, the little nameplate, if you will, uh, for the sentiment is this one. So what you have to do is you have to place the sentiment inside of that die, the space created by that die, and then run that through your die cutting machine. You can definitely use your embossing folder rather than your cutting folder for the sentiments. And then you'll get the sentiment applied onto your paper and i'm trying to find the one that i did here so bear with okay so the recommendation of course is that you use mirror card hello tanya welcome thank you for being here um so i did go ahead and emboss the time to celebrate and if i tilt it here because this is mirror card you might be able to see that a little bit now the other thing you can do of course is use regular card and then use ink or um embellishment mousse to make it stand out. Now here is the bell jar uh, and it is so pretty. Did I call this the right thing? Bear with me guys. Yes it is. <laughs> want to make sure that I'm not renaming the die. So this is the bell jar. You're going to notice it has the two little tabs on the sides if this is new to you. Then it has a solid piece that you can use with it. I've cut it out of white card. And then I've cut out that one that ha looks like it has little wings. I've cut it out with acetate. And then I've applied adhesive red line tape, if, as you can see there, onto those little um, flaps or wings, however you want to call that. Then, as you can see, I do have a little edge there that's in gold. What I did was that I cut out the larger piece. And then I use the second piece to cut out that large portion. And it gave me that little uh, trim, if you will. And that's what I have applied there. And all I did, guys, was you use Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive. I did not have to use any kind of special glue to adhere onto acetate. And by the way, this is the packaging. I always save the packaging that the, the dyes come adhered onto. They're wonderful for shakers or any you know kind of little acetate see-through windows. So that's what I did there. As you can tell, there are tiers here for a cake, all three of them. They look like this, and I did cut, I think I cut out everything, I'm not sure. Actually, no, I didn't, and I'll share with you why. <laughs> it's actually a little mysterious piece here, <laughs> and I don't know, um, I'm not 100% sure as to what it is, so I'll find out later, and if I do, you know, of course, then I'll share. <laughs> come back and share the air of my ways as I tend to do. So if you see that little cake, I was able to just very easily stack it. And the reason why is because the little lines in the center there actually do cut the slit into that cake. What's fantastic about, about that feature on a die is let's just say that you're making a really whimsical kind of Dr. Seuss-like cake. Let's just call it that for the sake of, you know, let your imagination go wild there for a moment. You can then decorate the cake according to the style of, you know, card you're making and insert little things into those slits. You don't have to use them just for the prompt, if you will, of the color that you want to make the cake, although it does help. And it also helps to stack the dies, you know, so that you don't have to guess as to where to place the paper, which I think is a lot of fun. Now, that little swirl, if you're wondering what that's all about, that goes with this little cookie here. And I am not a baker, so I don't know the names of all cookies, but that's one that's got a really beautiful scalloped edge with little piercings that the die will cut into the paper as well. And I think that was, I don't know if that's what's called a, a, a jammy dodger. <laughs> I don't know, guys, but I think it's so cute. So that's what the little cookie looks like, cut out of just a regular ivory um, classic card from Tonic Studios. And that is the satin gold paper that you can also get from Tonic. So 
I think I tried to use all Tonic Studios paper just in case you guys um, wanted to see what that would look like with what you might have at home. And then there's this other, oh my gosh, the fabulous, this is what, I know my English friends call this a biscuit. In the U.S., we call this a cookie. <laughs> but it's this rectangular one. It reminds me of the kind of cookies you uh, give a toddler when they're uh, teething. And what I also saw in this that I think would be fabulous is to stitch into those cookies if you want to do a different style of card, of course, um, because of those little holes in there. So, of course, ideas start swirling around in your mind. Um, then there is this die here. It cuts out a layer of a cupcake. It does cut into that paper, so all those little pieces are going to come out. And what's really fabulous is that you also get the shadow. So you can make your cupcake chocolate. You can make it strawberry, vanilla, whatever you like, right? And you're going to have that little shadow piece all the way around. You're going to be able to top your cupcake if you'd like to because there is that little frosting here. So you can use that um, right on top like so. And there you can frost your cupcake. If you want to kick it up a notch, you can use the little... Um, frosting or whipped cream is what I would call this to frost your cupcake like that so there's that piece and then of course ooh la la we've got to make it fancy so there's a little cherry to go on top that is just fantastic especially if you allow yourself the use of your fancy mirror card that we all hoard and we never want to use then take a little snippet of that <laughs> and you can make it shiny I know, Rita, it's so cute and, and it does, it makes you want to eat a little cookie, right? Um, so then there's the little donuts. So if, say, you have someone in your life that likes sweets but they're not into maybe the cupcakes or whatever, but you know that they're a donut fan, you can cut out the little donuts. And this does have sprinkles that emboss right into it. It's just a little bit hard to see on uh, the plain paper, but there's that little donut. Then there is a pretzel which i don't believe i cut out the pre yes i did yes i did i take it back so let me cut out or push out those little pieces in the center so here's a little pretzel absolutely adorable it's a cute size too it's not too big and it's not too small and then there's the little swirl here to decorate your cookies as well i have it right here and of course, again, you can use this as you like. So let me see what background I want to put this on. I guess it doesn't truly matter. Just so you guys can see it. So there's a little zip, right, that you do with frosting. Um, what else? There is the base onto which that little uh, jar is going to sit. And then onto that or behind it, depends on how you want to use this, of course, because it's your die set. Once it's in your hands, you use it as you like. You can use it plain, or you can place this on top, or you can stagger that. It all depends on how you're making this. And on, on here is where, of course, that little sentiment would go to help it stand out. So it's all going to, you know, have its proper place there. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, I'm, I want to get crafting, but before I start, I want to show you... Oh, there's also little candles, and those are cut out... Uh, those are teeny tiny. Okay, so what I recommend if you're going to make this kind of painstakingly small die cut, and I'm always honest with you guys, so I let you know if something is fiddly or as a, who is it uh, that tells me, is it Janine? Someone, someone of you guys tells me you're faffing, Rick. <laughs> um, those little fiddly bits, you want to get yourself uh, some Craft Perfect double sided tissue tape. This is very, very helpful because here's for instance the cherries you can place this on the back of your cardstock and then run this through your machine with those really tiny little pieces and there's the candles again okay so they're going nowhere until i peel them off of that and then they're going to have that adhesive right on the back so this is very thin paper but on both sides there is an adhesive so it's sticky and what you do is you stick this onto your paper and then do the die cutting. And I, if it sounds elementary, it's only because not everybody who watches these videos is a crafter or, you know, an avid crafter. And they kind of need to know those little things. 
So here are the little banners because this is a 46 piece die set and I did cut those out in several colors there. This one happens to have some spray on it. So of course, if you have your little pieces of paper laying about like I do, um, then you want to take advantage of those leftover pieces. I do it all the time. I have an entire folder full of any little snippets from projects and I, I don't let go of them because this is when I use them. By the way, this is the little frosting you can put on your cake. Hello, Mandy. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I thought of you today with the time of my video and I was like, oh, I could have come here a little bit earlier, but honestly, I was just um, uh, having to take my time. I'm moving slow today. <laughs> so there's the little frosting. And of course, depending on the colors that you use, you're going to get a super, super cute finish on that. And then, of course, you can cut it down to size, however you like. But back to the side. Now, these pieces I did not cut out because of the fact that I'm making kind of a sweet uh, card. However, here's that piece that I shared with you already onto which you'll layer your sentiment. There are two butterflies, a dragonfly, some grass, a little pot. On here, you can place several different plants and greens. Um, there's also st a stem here onto which you can layer some flowers. There's a fall uh, kind of like a um, maple leaf. Uh, some more little flowers that'll layer. And then some greenery. And of course, another larger leaf and then tiny flowers. And then lastly here, there is a little toadstool and it does have a larger and a smaller one. And then the little uh, stems for that come with it as well. So you can, oh, and the little bow, you can just have so much fun with the set. It's so cute. Um, I do hope that I can have some time to play with it very soon again. So let's get into this. And again, as I had mentioned, there are those stencils. So what I have done is that I cut out the pieces that are going to be the base of my card. I thought of Neapolitan uh, chocolate strawberry, right? So that's my color palette for the background. This is pearlescent card and then this is classic card. But as you can tell, they're kind of in the same. I think this is bubblegum pink, if I'm not mistaken. And then the brown, I cannot recall. And I apologize. I don't memorize all of the names. <laughs> my hard drive is not working like that these days. <laughs> Um, so, oh goodness, okay, I wanted to decide how to color what will be the little kind of background to all of this, and I wanted to go with Broken China Distress Oxide Ink because it can be very, very light, and that's purposely what I wanted, um, to just create a base for, um, 4444 where this is all going to sit <laughs> and I think I might repeat it here so let's start there I'm just going to be adventurous and trust myself right because it, sh it shouldn't be complicated <laughs> it really shouldn't all right so you can tell here for instance this uh, stencil is uh, smaller than my paper but because it, it's a repetitive pattern. You should be able to move it and then just adjust it as needed. Now, of course, you can use your um, stamp, stamp platform. Sorry, guys, my words. And I did some cleaning up, and mine is a little bit over that way. Let me grab that. Bear with. It's not too far. <laughs> and there we go. This is just for the sake of convenience, but of course you could always use tape and adhere, you know, kind of stick it down to your glass surface if you don't have one of these. Um, don't need the lid. And I also don't need this. This is my, my little media mat. And then there's a sticky mat and there's the magnet and there's all the things. There's so many things, right? But... Okay, what's kind of cool about the media mat, and that's this gray piece here, is that it keeps things from slipping. You see? <laughs> it's like an extra hand that's going to grab things for you. And then, of course, if you want to go crazy with the magnets, which I'm afraid of, <laughs> you 
then you can layer those on top to hold your stencil. And I'm going to start on this edge purposely because this is the actual side that I think I'm going to be using on this card. I might not use the the other. Um, so let me just grab a little brush. I'm going to confess that my little brush is the one that I was going to grab is dirty. So I'm going to grab another one over here. Okay, they get stained and sometimes I forget. Okay, so I'm just going to grab a tiny bit of this. Not too crazy. I'm going for a light look here. And it's going to be barely there. I hope you guys are having a fabulous week. Um, it's been cold and damp here. And when that weather kicks in, my back does not cooperate with me. So that's why I said I was moving slow. <laughs> moving slow. Okay, I'm just going to shift this down as I had mentioned. And you're going to notice it's super duper subtle. So I'm going to find my little cross hatch. Uh, I'm just going to just take a second there to say, okay, that's where I had it. And make sure it's nice and straight. And if you're just starting out with stenciling, um, give yourself some grace. Don't think that everything is always going to come out perfect this first time around because no one, you know, no one's perfect. <laughs> Perfection does not exist in crafting and that's why you know I've mentioned in the past just it you know if it doesn't come out the way you thought it's an embellishment opportunity and just stick something on top of it and call it pretty you know so don't be too hard on yourself if it shifts if like you know didn't go the way you plan don't worry about it okay so there's my little very subtle pattern barely barely there that would be fantabulous uh, on a baby card, by the way. So if you wanted to make one of these, and maybe you have stickers. Maybe the stickers are like little diapers or baby boots or, you know, things like that. And you want to fill the jar with that. That would be super cute. So I'm going to repeat that here. Um, yes, creative opportunities, by all means. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same again. Just applying, you guys saw I barely even filled that brush and I think I don't even know what that was. A little piece of lint. <laughs> oh. Sometimes you have a secret admirer in your life that follows you here and there. Mine are cat hair. <laughs> cat hair and lint. <laughs> like, why do you follow me everywhere I go? Leave me alone. Okay. I'm going to set that aside now. You saw how quickly I did that. There's really nothing to it because I'm not, this is not going to be the focus of this project. So easy peasy. I'm going to put this away. And I am going to be good and put the lid back on so that I don't go chasing after it and not find it later when I need it. Okay, so for this, I had mentioned my little colors. Um, so here's the plan. The plan plan is to start from the backwards, you know, backwards and work forwards, if that makes any sense. So I had cut a base that was five. Let's see here. What was my size? Because of the layers that I cut and I did use, um, this set here. Okay. This was released some time ago. Okay, these are the fancy footwear frame dies. Okay, I really like the rectangles on this because it has a large one and then it has a little stitched edge one. Those are the only two that I use. And that uh, large one will create a five by seven panel. So what I did was that I took my smooth white card from Tonic Studios that you can grab. It's really nice weight. And I just cut it a little bit taller. So that was five and, or I'm sorry, seven and one eighth inch tall. Okay. And then I did this at five and one eighth as well in width. So that times two is what, 10 and a half? 
Or is it ten and a quarter? Ten and a quarter. Ten and a quarter inches. <laughs> okay. I hope that's self-explanatory. Then I just took my uh, my paper and I folded it in half, so I could have this situation going on here. I cut out the smaller panel in that beautiful bubblegum pink, and I I got this out for a reason because I want to now cut this one in half so that I have a little panel for my little folded page there. Okay, so if this measures five inches, half of that is two and a half inches. And I am going to cut this down slightly only because I want to give myself a little edge or border. And this does not need to be scientific. I just like that really pretty beveled edge. And I'm going to move this down a tiny little bit. And I'm just eyeballing it. But that's probably a sixteenth of an inch. That's all I've removed there. And then the other one was the one that I just colored. This is going to layer on top of one of these. This would also be two and a half inches wide. But again, because it's going to be a layer, then I'm actually going to take it down to two and three eighths. Um, yeah, I'm going to start there. We shall see. Let me look here. Do you have issues with smooth cardstock cracking? Melissa, that's a great question. Um, the, the smooth, so this is the card that Melissa's referring to, smooth card, um, and it's a 111 pounds or 300 GSM. The one thing I noticed about it is how, how you fold your card matters. And for instance, when you go to use your um, scoring tool, right? And you place your little paper here, I'm gonna say, okay. So if I score it here, then I'm going to fold with that line, I'm gonna fold away, not toward me. This is not gonna be a valley. If I, if I push that paper in, I'm actually compromising the the, um, the the weave that's formed, right? It's kind of like fabric. If you if you push into it, then now that became a little bit weaker than had it just been left alone. So then that's a perfect opportunity to fold it away. So the same happens here. If I'm going to fold it close that way, I want to score it on this side, and I hope that that's that helps. And then of course. The tools, I know that a lot of people think our, us crafters are kind of weird that we have so many tools. They do their work. <laughs> you really want to burnish the card because then it's like an iron. You press that, there's a memory now made to that paper and it's going to want to stay there. The same goes for that other fold. If you press onto it gently with one of these tools, it's like you ironed a nice crisp white shirt and it, you know, by the end of the day, you still look snappy. It's the kind of, same kind of thing with the paper. Yeah. It's a great question though. I, I used to think like, what's the deal? <laughs> Why? Why do people do those things? And after making cards and seeing how, yes, you know, sometimes you get a, a huge bend or crack. It's because of that. The, the paper wants to stay where it was, you know? Um, but thank you for asking that because it's a valid question. Okay, this little guy was dormant for a little bit. I may have left him without um, the cap on for a little too long. I'm going to see. We all know glue likes to be treated with kindness, right? <laughs> be nice to it and talk to it and say, please, please join us. And then it will. Okay. I'm going to set this down first, and then we're going to have some fun just uh, kind of figuring out where all these little goodies are going to go on this card. I was actually thinking of doing one of those really fancy fold cards, but I settled on this because I did want the, um, I wanted all those extra little die cuts to be really at the front and center of, of the card. And I thought if I got too fancy, I might take away from that. So here's where that sec second panel is going to go now. 
And of course, if you just so happen to have a dice, um, not a die set, I'm sorry, a, uh, an embossing folder that happens to have sweeties on it or you know, any kind of candy motif, that would be excellent for these kinds of panels. Because then you can really go all out. Oh, girlfriend, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, so far, I mean, you saw the worst of it which is that you know the 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 adhesive is going to solidify a little bit there so you just remove that little bit that dries off on that tip um i did find that overnight i do want to place the cap back on um it's just the best thing to do to make sure that i don't have to fiddle with it too much um you i think you know that i craft every day and my hands get tired i always you know share that with everybody i just have got glue on my finger there anyway um but it has a little holder here so you know where your cap is you're not looking for that and that's been a big thing for me is like i take those off and then i'm like oh, oh no where did i put it right so i really like that and then when i'm done i just put it right back on here and of course i make sure that i don't squeeze that trigger while that's on that's it that's and then it does pull in there you see that but then that's silicone so it cleans super easy as well so so far so good okay so i'm gonna make sure that this fits how i like it and i, I had a feeling i was gonna want to cut that down a little bit more so i'm gonna do that and i think this is gonna end up being two and one eighth or something like that Okay, I hope I didn't make too loud of a noise there. Sorry. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Now, if I were not doing this live video, I would take that same die. Remember how I was pointing them out? Okay, and maybe I should do it. You can then, you know what, I should probably do it. Match up the little stitches, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do it just to show you guys. You can match up the stitches on here. And you're gonna feel it grip like little teeth because there's already those little stitch lines there. And then you can run this through again and get your nice stitching on that other edge. So I'm gonna try to do that. And this will just take a moment and I'll go ahead and run it. Okay, so let me do that and then I'll show you guys. And in the meantime, I will adhere this one. The other thing is that this doesn't apply too much adhesive either. So it's kind of cool with that as well. Okay, so there's that. And now here's what I meant. It took off that little tiny bit there, but now I have the entirety of this. So if you want to invest in a die set, um, and you're thinking that only, you know, only the size available is what you're gonna be able to cut, um, I can, I'm here to tell you that depending on how you stack those dies, and hello, Sapphire Manga, depending on how you stack them, you can really really extend the use of the dies that you have it just takes a little bit of you know manipulation if you will that you're telling the die what to do <laughs> not the other way around and then that opens up you know the possibilities of how you're going to use them which is a lot of fun so there's the beginning of that card i also took my mumbo jumbo oval from this set here and this is because this is what I have on hand <laughs> maybe you guys might have seen that video I made with the marshmallow um, set a wall piece uh, you know wall decor using this is called intricate oval layering die set I was trying to find an oval that would fit a five by seven card it just so happens that that medium sized piece there uh, worked out and this is how that looks. So 
that's going to go here. It's going to be the foundation of where all the goodies are going to go. And I'm just going to um, make sure that I kind of aim toward the one edge. And I'm going to avoid the center there. I'm going to be a little more generous here because I really want this to stick. I'm going to hold my breath. <laughs> hold your breath. Okay, and what I'm doing here is I'm aiming, you know, this here so that when my card is closed, it doesn't hang out too far there, right? And then top and bottom, I could be more careful. And um, I wasn't, and now it's just going to stay. <laughs> I've got a little bit of gap there, but you guys know I'm going to cover that up. <laughs> but that's okay. We're going to keep going. Now I have this piece and it's the pearlescent card that sort of matches that other little uh, peachy card, which I think is so pretty. So here, the fancier the paper, the less adhesive I like to use. Just a little bit of a drop there. Oh, well, thank you so much. Melissa, I appreciate it. I sometimes forget that they're there. <laughs> I had someone leave a comment on a video I made so long ago, and I was like, what video even is that? <laughs> it was so funny. I was like, oh, that's so cool. I, I mean, it, it was very flattering. Sometimes you feel like, uh, who's going to watch that? <laughs> okay, now here's something you live and you learn, right? Um, da, 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 da. the placement of this is going to be a little bit weird so I'm thinking I probably should have made that oval darker but I'm going to have to live with it now so we're going to see what happens here unless hmm because I do want to make sure that I have my little piece here okay so this is going to go right behind there And I'm also going to have this piece. So I think this is how I'm going to be able to cover up that little gap that I was mentioning. I think it's going to help me to place that down there, which is not exactly on top of the oval. Oh, I think I was out of frame. Sorry, guys. So I think I'm going to put the little stand a little bit lower than I normally would have, but I don't think it's going to take away from the card. Now here, I do want to kind of give this a little bit of a shadow. I have my vintage photo, which I accidentally got glitter on at some point. <laughs> and I'm just going to really lightly, really, really lightly touch the edge of that. Okay, I'm happy with that. Make sure I get the ink off of that background. Don't want to ruin my card. And then this little guy, now you can tell that that yellow is not so stark. Okay, it's got that little bit of shadow on there. I'm going to start down here. Oh, well, that's awesome. That is wonderful, Melissa. I think it's a great idea to do that, you know? Like, if you're doing household chores or, you know, or the voice of the person that you're watching just becomes familiar to you, then by all means, I'll try to remember that and do a little shout out. <laughs> you know? Like, hey, Melissa, <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> So here you do have the opportunity to add some dimension to this if you want to, but I think it's going to be okay with just 
the uh, acetate portion of that. So I'm just going to apply this directly on here. And notice I didn't put any ink on there. That's okay. Um, you don't want to put the sentiment upside down like I was just about to. <laughs> but I'm planning. I'm planning, right? And I know that this little guy is going to kind of be hanging out there. Okay, so I can go ahead and apply that one. If you like little metal findings on your cards, there is the opportunity for that on here as well. It's got those little holes on there, so you can put little brads on there if you wanted to. And of course, you want to do that before you would hear the bass. So that says time to celebrate. Super cute. And the cool thing is that that background is also embossed by the die that cuts it. So you get a really good alignment there. No, 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 no. Tricky, tricky. This little guy needs to also be the host here of the cake, right? So I'm going to do the planning of that before I place it on here. So I'm going to set this aside for just a moment. make sure I don't get ink on that. Let's do this cake first. And I did cut out more than one little frosting layer. So what I'm going to do is apply, oh, it looks like I had already started adhering that. I didn't even notice. Apply a little bead of adhesive on that. I'm going to do the same on this. Start layering that. And of course here you could ink this. You can cut it in a bunch of different colors, however you want to. And what I'm going to do is use the same little strip again. Um, I don't know if I want it on that middle layer though. Let's see the third one. I might skip the middle layer and just put it on the top. Let's see. Nope, that's too much frosting. <laughs> it almost calls for this to be on the second layer. Okay. I'm going to try to just make up my mind here. I'm going to add a little bit more adhesive right along that little edge. And then I'm just going to cut away the excess here. Boom. Oops. It flew. And I guess I cut it a little bit too short. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, I'm doing that over. Okay. Bear with me, guys. I cut it too short. <laughs> I made it fly. Maybe I don't even want that same color. Let me see here. Let's do... Let's see, let's see. I have my little, see, this is what I was referring to. I keep my little stash of leftover papers, and then I just kind of rummage through and go, hey, I kind of like the shine of that or whatever, and make my decisions. See? So those little strips, they're valuable. They come in, come in handy every now and then. Now I know I don't need the entirety of this even, so I'm just going to run this through my die cutting machine get the portion that I need. Maybe I'll just do the top layer after all. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. I think I'm going to use my baby. What I call my baby. So that way I don't have to turn around. Being lazy. Okay. I'm just going to use my low tack tape there. I'll get that to stay. Okay. I try to be more patient with these little machines because they're not as accurate. I don't trust them as much as the, the one with the magnet, magnetic plate. Okay, and you know what? They never cut through. I don't know why. They're not as powerful, these little guys. So I find myself having to run it through more than once. 
come on, cooperate. I hope that did it. Let's see. I think it did. Yes, okay, perfect. Okay, so I have my little piece of frosting. Set that aside. Say goodbye to that. And let's get this cake going. Okay, I think that I only need enough for that top portion. Let's just pretend that that's exactly what I want. Or, nope, I keep, keep going back to that one. I'm gonna put my adhesive right along that little line. There we go. Because I do have the little candles, so don't want to forget about those little guys. Okay, now I'm going to just aim correctly this time around so I don't ruin it. And now I have two different colors of rose there, by the way. But that's perfectly fine. Because it is a festive cake. Okay. I'll put that one there. And I think I want my little cake down here. And then I'll put the little candles on last. I have some more over here. I need to grab my little tweezers for this. There is no way. Right, so first let's adhere the cake proper. It doesn't move on me. And I'm trying to envision what this is going to look like. And if I, if I seem indecisive, it's only because I don't want this to look like my cake is floating in the air. <laughs> None of that. <laughs> I want it to look like it's supposed to be there. Right, so there's kind of a lot of room up there, but now it makes sense that they made the little bow that you can use on here as well. <laughs> Depending on your sense of humor, you can have a lot of fun with these kinds of things. Okay, just going to go right down there. And now let's get those little candles on here. Now I think I'm going to put just one here in the center. And then work out from that. Hello Maria, welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. My friends are just being patient watching me glue itty bitty <laughs> pieces of paper. Okay, so here's the ones that have the little back um, backup adhesive there. Um, I'm going to remove what I don't need. There we go. I think I'm happy with three candles because this is not for, you know, it's not for a four year old or anything like that. So three little candles, I think will do just to represent you know happy birthday celebrations so that's going to be the extent of that if it's too light for you for instance if you're bothered by the fact that that's a light colored cake on a light background then by all means you can take the ink i think this is the one that i was using and let's just take a piece of card here um, this is leftover from what I was cutting, right? Nope, that's the wrong one. It's the other. What I would need is, and I wish I had just a spare oval. Let's do a die. Let me see here. I think. Nope. I'm almost tempted to use this. <laughs> this is just a little cap that I happen to have here. I'm going to use that because it's going to prove my point anyway. And I'm going to take a little tiny bit of ink. So let's just pretend this is a piece of paper that, you know, is an oval or a circle. And then you can just go around it a tiny little bit just to create some shadow. 
if you're comfortable just doing it you know freehand you can do that because this is going to end up looking like glass or the shadow of glass of you know a little window if you will I'm just going to grab a little tiny bit more and if you wanted to do this in uh, yellow, for instance, it could look like the glow of the candles. It's up to you. Just going to go around this a tiny little bit. And it touched the cake, but I'm okay with that. Again, I'm not going for perfection. So now I'm going to hurry up and put this on the background now. <laughs> I think it needed that little bit of blue there. Then I'm going to put this on top. I do think that it would work out really great if I also adhered it to this back portion. So I'm going to apply a little bit of adhesive here because that way my acetate is actually kind of grounded, if that makes sense. I like red line tape for this because it's, you know, I don't have that drying time that I have with the liquid adhesive. So I'm actually going to apply this here. This is how I did the front as well, so you may as well see how I did that. The tape is wider than the base, but that's okay. You don't need a ton of it. Okay, so then I just cut away what I didn't need here, and that was the perfect size for the other, the other side of this. Okay, so I'm just going to apply that on the other, just like that. Don't need too much. And then I'm going to remove the lining. Come on, baby. So used to having long nails and I cut them down and it can make you feel like you don't have hands anymore. <laughs> okay, now that I've put my fingerprints all over that acetate, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put this right on top and now fold that back. Okay. And now I can peel away the backing on these two sides, just the same way I just did that. And apply a little more adhesive to make sure that this is kind of grounded here. Now this little guy can go right on top, making sure it's kind of landing there. Okay. I've got the little jar with the cake inside, and I think it's worthwhile to either do a little bit of texture on that back panel, or a little bit of inking, or a little bit of spray, you know, uh, and definitely the cake, you know, to add a little shine to that is super cute. Now we can go ahead and go crazy with the cookies and, you know, the, um, the frosting and all that jazz. So I'm going to avail myself of all these little pieces. I'm going to look at the chat really quickly. Oh, Maria. Okay. I'm sorry, Maria. This, yes. Thank you so much. Um, Sapphire Manga for naming the die set. Yes. And, um, I've been doing the same thing the last, oh my gosh, I want to say the last three days in a row. I've just been labeling my, my die sets, uh, putting them in, um, in the correct folders. And guys, I don't know if you guys took advantage of the sales that Tonic did with the, um, it was, oh my gosh, what was it? Storage 24. So you would get 24% off of, uh, anything you purchased over $40. I completely took advantage of that to get some magnets and all that good stuff um, to be able to organize because it can get crazy so fast. So on here, this little guy, I think I want to kind of darken that a little bit. Give my little cookie a little bit of a toasty edge there. You can use a marker or ink, whatever you want. 
I like that color. This is, by the way, Sand Castle. I want it to look like my cookie's got a little bit of a toasty edge there. So why not? And I'm going to do like a letter C here. Like a half moon shape. Just like that. And this is just regular cardstock, by the way. Um, the classic card. But no reason why you can't color it. Okay, so this is definitely one. The little swirl would have been great with the double-sided adhesive, but I forgot. So, a little tiny drop of glue is all you need. And I'm just now going to place that on top. A little frosting. And of course, I could have done that in shiny colors, but that's okay. I'm just going to layer these here and there. I think I'm going to put the little cookies down here because there's the brown on that side. And I do have more, of course, as I had shown you earlier. And then I think I'm going to place some of those... Um, cupcakes on the inside as well. So I think these are going to go up there. These are going to go over here. Okay. I think for those, I might refer back to that ink. There I go again. I think I'm going to refer back to this ink. Make them a little more brown on the edges. Do you guys know, I, I mean, does it matter what color these cookies are? I'm supposing it doesn't. Um, but they remind me of the, the kind of biscuits that I have when I go. Um, there's an Indian store that I like to shop at. And they always have these um, cardamom oh, biscuits. Oh my gosh, they're so good. <laughs> so that's what I'm thinking of when I see these. Maria, you're saying you can't find your red line tape. You know when you're going to find it is when you're absolutely not looking for it at all. <laughs> That's usually when you find things. And I've also got my little... I decided this would be a chocolate cupcake, but I do have others here. I was thinking this would be really cute as a... Um, Oh, what is that called? I'm blanking, guys. I apologize. Oh, my gosh, I can't think of the name. Like Devil's Food. Um, what's the one that's red? I've made. I've actually made them, <laughs> and I can't think of the name right now. Uh, oh gosh, you guys tell me. Oh, isn't that wonderful? It's like shopping all over again when you. <laughs> You start discovering like, oh, yeah, that's right. I own that. That's really cool. Okay, so if um, if I didn't share or if you didn't see this earlier, you can take those little pieces out. I mean, you can certainly leave them in as well. It's all up to you how you make these. Okay, but then it ends up looking like the wrapper of the cupcake, which I think is really cute. I think this is going to be like a cinnamon one. It's in that ginger. I think the name of this uh, paper is ginger pie or ginger cake or something like that. Which I thought was really cute. And then again, I had mentioned the frosting. I don't know if I want to use this yellow one. Um, It could be butterscotch. I'm going to put a little bit of that ink on here again. And I feel like something got on that paper, but I'm just going to let it go. Move on. Keep moving. Oh, nice. Maria, that sounds awesome. I made a recipe that I've been making for a really long time. 
for Christmas. That's what I gifted people were um, their coconut uh, buttermilk cupcakes. And they have a cream cheese coconut frosting. They're my absolute favorite. And I decided to make cookies this year, this or this past, past Christmas, I'm sorry, as well as the cupcakes. And that's what I gifted everyone. I hope they enjoyed them. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Sometimes people figure, oh, you know, just got those from a store. But I'm like, no. I stayed up for three days baking like a maniac. I think I'm going to do these. This is the pearlescent card um, from Tonic, which I think is really pretty because it doesn't, it's not overly shiny, but it just really gives your embellishments a really special touch because it shows off all of those little grooves and indentations in the paper and all that good stuff. So it's especially cute when the dye will emboss into the paper. That's when I really like using that kind of paper. And then, of course, any of the specialty card, which I had recently used this um, white one. I had some little leftovers of that, and I decided, okay, this is going to be the perfect time to use it because it's got gorgeous texture, and if you're going to cut tiny pieces of paper, why not use that super cute fancy paper? I've got this pink one, I think. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with pink on that cupcake, even though I had put that yellow on there. For some reason, I didn't like that. Okay, and there was another video I did using this little die cut in particular, where I made ice cream cones out of it. So that's a really good use of that little die cut there. Um, hello, Leslie. Thank you for being here. Sorry, I'm just noticing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, she's doing quite well. She had me in stitches the other day laughing so hard, as, as usual. <laughs> Her sense of humor. Oh my gosh. So to give you a little, a little uh, update on my mom. <laughs> She now, oh, this is so sad. Okay, so she lives in Puerto Rico. And if you don't know this, uh, you know, there are cultural differences wherever you go in the world. So, for instance, here in the United States, uh, the American style of, um, you know, looking at your pets, for instance, Americans are known for treating their pets like family. You know, like it's it's my baby, that's my son, that's my daughter, that's, you know... I, I hear people refer to their pets as children and all that. So where I come from, that is not the case. Animals are animals, period. <laughs> all of that to say that she's now got a cat and a dog that don't belong to her, but are happily on her property eating her food <laughs> because she doesn't have the heart to ignore them. And it's so sad. It really is. I think, you know, I wish... Things could be a little bit tougher on people who uh, who do that, because really, um, animals are not deserving of that kind of treatment. And she's she's really kind to them though. Um, so she's like, "Hey, I've got this cat. I don't know what to do." Because she's got a little Chihuahua. That's her pet, and the Chihuahua's not very amused at all that these other animals are now showing up at his mama's house. <laughs> But she's, yeah, she's quite entertained now. All right, so I'm, I'm frosting my cupcakes. <laughs> I've decided to add all the flavors in case you couldn't tell. I'm just adding all of the toppings. <laughs> because why not? This is the best kind of cupcake is the one with no calories because it's made of paper. So then you can add all the toppings. <laughs> So now I'm taking the little lining away here. I'm trying to make sure, yep, it's removed. But I am going to kind of back it up with liquid adhesive as well, even though there's, you know, that paper adhesive on there. And this little guy needs some whipped cream, right? So let's whip it up. <laughs> She 
she had a pit bull, but the um the poor little guy passed away. And um he was so sweet. Such a loving loving dog, but he was a guard dog. Um and um yeah, sadly he's no longer with her. It uh, makes me sad. He was such a cutie. But it's a different life, you know. Okay. I'm going to put the little cherry on this. And this is the end of the cupcakes, guys. <laughs> no more cupcakes. It's only three. Um, but, of course, when you stagger these things, they end up looking super cute. So you decide, you know, how many to use, where to use them. I think I'm going to use this one here. And of course, you don't always have to use everything, you know, that you make on the same card. You can just play around, see, you know, which colors you prefer and all that good stuff. It's a great opportunity to kind of play around with that as well. Now, for instance, here, there's this little pink donut I had cut out, and then I did also cut it out in, um, the, I got to thinking about powdered donuts and whatnot, <laughs> and their colors. So I was looking at the colors of paper that I had, I cut them out in those colors there. Um, what else did I do? So there's that other little cupcake that I'm not going to make. And then there's the banners. So if I'm happy with that placement, and I'll, I'll use the other ones on the inside. Maybe I can use a little pink donut up here. Let's see. It's going to depend really on the banners. Unless I put the banners on top of here, which I think look really cute. There's all sorts of colors going on here, but it is a birthday card. I think this needs a little more color. So what I'm going to do is that on here... I'm going to take the okay. I'm going to take these pencils, and I'm going to give this a little bit of sprinkles here by just coloring in the the deboss little portions of that that um, that the die cut placed onto that paper. Looking a little crazy. <laughs> But oh well. There's that. Can give it a little bit of shadow with that leftover ink to kind of tone down the pink. Hmm, let's see here. And one of the reasons I'm a little bit kind of relaxed about this whole thing also is because at the end of the day, you know, you can always go back and add some shine with your Nouveau drops. And let me tell you, <laughs> that changes everything. Um, there's so much you can do by adding Nouveau drops to your embellishments. So that's what I'll do once all of these are placed on here. And if, in case you didn't know, there are scented nu uh, Nouveau drops as well, which are perfect for these kinds of things. Um, and if that sounds juvenile, oh well. <laughs> so Maria saying when she was little, some kids would sell chocolate flavored paper? Wait, what? How? <laughs> I need to know. That sounds like a wonderful diet. <laughs> because let's face it, I've got the paper. <laughs> I've got the paper, so why not? Let me know the secret. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's excellent. <laughs> Years ago, um, after <laughs> after my son um, was born, and I think, oh gosh, 
I think he was already about, I want to say he was six years old, maybe seven or something like that. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I never took off that, that baby, you know, that pregnancy weight. I just was like, what is going on? <laughs> so I started going, going to Weight Watchers and, um, I, would go, I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> I just knew that they had meetings and whatever. And, um, uh, my doctor actually was the one who recommended it. So I was like, all right, I'll go, you know. Um, I don't know if I'm going to like it or whatever, but I was doing quite well with it only <laughs> because of the fact that I'm a total, you know, competitive type A personality. <laughs> it wasn't about the nutrition whatsoever. It was about the fact that they gave you little stickers at the end of the week. And if you, you had to go to this room with perfect strangers and weigh in in front of them, okay? Like if that peer, that kind of peer pressure doesn't work, I don't know what will, but it worked on me and I was all about the, the little sticker. They, uh, it was stars, I think, or something like that. And then you got a charm. I don't even remember, <laughs> but, but I remember, um, some of the ladies saying, okay, I, I was losing weight so fast. <laughs> they were like, how are you doing this? <laughs> it's not fair. You know, that's That kind of comment. I was like, dude, just eat the box. <laughs> Because, because they would give you points and you had, uh, you know, 20 some odd points a day and then don't go over the points or use the points, whatever. It was always this argument. Like, do you use the extra points or do you not? <laughs> and I, you know, in typical style, it's like, listen, I'm not going to take this so seriously that I'm going to, you know, be giving myself heart attacks over it. So that's what I told him. I was like, just, just stop eating the food and <laughs> eat the box and you'll be all right. <laughs> Oh my gosh. But no, I was going to the gym. That's all. <laughs> Watching what I ate and going to the gym. Okay, I think I'm going to use some little um, colors on the banner. So what I did was that I cut out these uh, little banners in white. The same white card, the smooth white card, I should say. This one here. I've been rambling. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Uh, I can amuse myself in a padded room. And then I also cut it out of the classic card, ivory, right? Um, that's wild. Tea dyeing paper, but with chocolate. Hey, so you mean all those... <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to let it go. <laughs> oh, gosh. All those times I threw out those paper towels after cleaning up after my children. I could have just been having snacks. <laughs> Uh, Maria, what are you doing to me? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so I think I'm going to um, <laughs> color three of these. <laughs> they discovered something new and didn't tell me. It's so unfair. <laughs> okay, I think... You know, I, I'm going <laughs> going into the orange realm. I don't typically craft with orange, so this is really interesting that this is where this is leaning. Um, but hey, that's pretty cool. I'm thinking that I'm going to add this here and kind of this one in the background. No, that green's got to go. <laughs> I'm just going to do this one as a shadow and then this one and then I'm going to add Novo drops and call that fine. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Guys, it doesn't take much <laughs> for my imagination to go a little crazy. So <laughs> Maria's talking about chocolate paper and I'm like, what? <laughs> The movie that just went through my mind. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, so here I want to use some shine. Shine, baby, shine. Let's see here. Because this is meant to be festive. And this is lemon drizzle. I wonder if that's going to look good. Oops, wait. I think I have one that's already used. Ah, uh, come on. Golden honey. Ooh, that would be cute. 
So I've got some of these glitter markers and I'm trying to determine which one would look cute on here. Maybe the golden honey. Let's give it a try. Let's see what happens. Because, yep, you can just use that on the edge of the paper. Ooh la la, it's so cute. Okay, so that little touch of shine is excellent on that. And I'm going to repeat that on the other simple little banner here that I accidentally already stuck on there, but that's okay. I'm just going to go along the edge there with that shine just a little bit. And of course, you know, you should be doing this before you stick it onto your card, but this is what we do, right? Okay, I think I'm going to be happy with that. Add a little adhesive. And then just kind of stagger that. And that reminds me of, um, I'm not Mexican, but I love the Mexican tradition on birthdays of putting the um, really beautifully elaborate um, paper that's you know cut out kind of like um, we do snowflakes but they call it papel picado and it can be really beautifully uh, designed I got a little smudge on there guys so this is my rubber eraser and I do not craft without it because when I get a little icky on my paper that's how I clean it off and sometimes it's just whatever residue you know can be on your hands any kind of adhesive that got on the wrong place and I'm really having to hold that down to make sure it sticks but once it makes that kind of tack then you're good to go so that is the front and now of course on the inside what I typically do when I'm giving away a card is that I'll write the sentiment separately so that I don't ruin it <laughs> and then I stick it on here so it doesn't have to fit the entirety of this panel so that's of course a great um way to introduce any of these other little goodies um here and there so i can go ahead and put the little donut on there i do have these markers that um i can use to give this for instance chocolate sprinkles now remember, the die does all the work for you, so you can just follow the little lines that are, that are kind of embedded in there. It makes it easy. Kind of like a cheat code. And then just lightly touch it, and you're going to get the little sprinkles as if you knew all along where they went, <laughs> which is great. Okay, so that can go there. And then the little cupcake's in the corner. Um... I don't know if I'm going to use the pretzel. I can go there. Why not? And put these here. And that little cherry is very, very delicate because it doesn't have, um, you know, there's not a lot of surface area there. So if you use that paper, that double-sided adhesive that I referred to, it's going to get just enough adhesive on there so that you, you know, can stick it onto the background. Um, oh my goodness, you're in California, Maria? It's cold and dreary here. I live in upstate New York, and as I call it the, the clouds of doom. <laughs> Come here in the winter, and they settle and don't leave until the beginning of May. Uh, so it's always gray outside this time of year. Um, bright gold. Oh, I'm sorry. So Melissa was talking about bright gold. Um, 
So are you talking about the glitter pen? I have, um, I don't even know which colors I have, to be completely honest. <laughs> it's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Let's see here. There's lemon drizzle, golden honey, and I have uh, wild mulberry. That's a gorgeous color. What else is in here? I have a purple one, a, a green one, so spearmint and lavender and all that good stuff. They're all beautiful colors. I just wasn't quite sure if I wanted to go crazy with those. And then I have stra strawberry bonbon, but I want to make sure I don't put too much pink on here, even though I kind of did already. Um, that's kind of the way it went. Because again, I was thinking of Neapolitan colors. That's really the color scheme that I wanted to go with because I just love that. Um, and the papers kind of just justified it. I think this is a fun card. I am now going to introduce the Nouveau Drops and I'm going to try to be really careful so I don't ruin it. And I wanted to mention the, um, I had said that you can get uh, Aroma Drops this is one that I happen to have that I really like and it is vanilla cupcake so how perfect um so you can smell it it's so amazing that they did they could even do this you can smell it and so you can um you know follow the designs of the little cookies for instance if you wanted to let me make sure now my room gets a little chilly and that will solidify the Nouveau Drops, sadly, if it, they get too cold. So I typically keep, the same way we do the, the bottles and we clean the little nozzle out, I typically keep a needle nearby. And this one might be too big because I was using that for something else. Let me see here. I have a little dish over to the side and I keep a sewing needle and um, kind of like a quilting needle and typically that will be sufficient to clean these out. Yep. And then I can have a play with that. I like to kind of space them out initially, you know, here and there. You don't need too much of it. But it's just enough that if you get, you know, a little hankering for vanilla, <laughs> you can smell it. <laughs> You're not going to want to eat it, <laughs> Maria. <laughs> so Mandy was uh, rainy until two. <laughs> this is awesome. I love that it always feels like a friendly reunion. When you guys are here and I'm doing my silly little videos <laughs> that you guys tolerate. <laughs> um, it's a lot of fun. Now for the little donut, you can go a little bit more, you know, be a little bit more crazy with that because um, it's got sprinkles on it. So this is a shimmering rose crystal drop. This came with the... Um, the bunny and egg kit. Oh my gosh, that this drop is so adorable. It's just the perfect shade of pink. And of course, I'm just gonna go ahead and follow through on those little sprinkles. And if you're afraid that it's gonna look too, you know, two dimensional, you can always you pick it up with a paintbrush So you can just make a little pool of it and pick it up with a paintbrush and then apply it. Or you can take the paintbrush after the fact and just kind of flatten out the little drops. And I'm going to just use my little paper towel here. And of course, you don't have to do this. This is just for, you know, for you to see the different uses of the drops and all that good stuff. It's just fun. So all I'm doing is taking that, that drop and I'm just elongating it by dragging the tip of that paintbrush 
and then because I don't want to reapply the drop then I just remove whatever amount is on there and then now I have sprinkles instead of um, the domed little drop because this the quality of this drop is that it will create you know that little kind of pearl shape so that's really cool and then the banners can use a little bit of color there so let's see what do I have here I can just go in with uh, silver crystals this is kind of like a clear and again I'm gonna make sure that I can get the drop out I just do not recommend that you go directly onto your project if you're not sure of the consistency because you will regret it clean that up and okay so now on those little banners that I had left um, plain with no color then they're just gonna have that little bit of shine And let's just say that orange was too bright for you, then you can definitely take a different drop in a different color and just tone it down a little bit. Make it, whether it be a little more red or a little more pink. Oopsie, I didn't mean to put it on there. <laughs> um, so that's three kinds of drops, by the way. That's a glitter one. This was the aroma drop. And then there was the crystal drop. Along with that are um, the dream drops. These are more pearlescent in the finish. There's a glitter drop that's like this. That's more glitter than anything else. So the sky's the limit on that. You can do a lot. Um, yes, by all means, Maria. I, I love, love, love that technique. To just water it down and then use it with a brush. So, for instance, the um, the little cookies there, if I wanted to give it a glaze, so case in point, let's just do that with the, the aroma drop. Let me just wipe this down. And these little squares are great <laughs> because then you can kind of plan out your project. Um, let me grab that same brush that I, for a second, couldn't see on my surface. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to just spray a little bit of water on here. Now I am going to move this aside because I do not want to whip my card. And of course, it's best to do this before you assemble any of the stuff. So, you know what? Let's just do it on this little cookie first. But I'm going to use the back of the brush to just swirl the water into that drop. And this is going to give me a much lighter consistency. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to take a sip of water. Okay, now that I have that the way that I want it. Yes, <laughs> we all do it. <laughs> we all do it, believe me. And now I can paint in my little cookie and it's this one's gonna be like a frosted sugar cookie because it'll have that beautiful creamy center and then once it's dry of course I can embellish it with one of the little swirls and that'll look really cute so I'm gonna let that dry and it is the perfect color that creamy color so I am going to go ahead and just kind of color these in and because I had used that oxide ink um, or I'm sorry distress ink then it's really going to blend beautifully with that so thank you Maria for mentioning it because I do love the way that that looks and I love to paint so any any excuse to get out a paintbrush absolutely is a lot of fun. So while I have you guys here, I want to invite you, of course, to watch the videos that I'll be making. And of course, I am 
kind of sorry that today was not one of those videos but making the flowers um i had promised you guys i would be doing a, a flower series so in january i did the first video this month i'll be doing the second so on and so forth those videos are just meant to share different techniques just like the ones that you're seeing today except for the medium will be flowers so that could be a 3d flower could be a stamped flower um whatever um so it's just a way of course to just share crafty ideas on this channel and also help the channel grow so on those videos if you leave a comment you share the video and your friends come and subscribe once i reach 5,000 followers i will be giving away a copy of everything that i make so for instance the first video were 3d flowers so that's already set aside for whomever you know wins if you're uh, not us based then in lieu of the physical items it'll be a gift card to tonic studios because that's where i like to shop and so why not um so yeah, I hope you guys en enjoy that and that you join me. I'm going to use this as if it were a shadow. And I'm just going to do little lines here on the base. Because I've got my paintbrush. Apparently I also have a little cat hair that joined me. So let's get rid of that. <laughs> oh, oh goodness. I've got that, that color on here. So I'm just going to take advantage of it. And I'm going to draw just horizontal lines here because it's going to give it a little bit of shine but it's also going to make it look like there's a shadow under there and i like that just a little texture on that and that little pretzel that's kind of peeking out may as well do that too I think I'm going to leave it at that. I think that's sufficient, but let me know if you guys have any questions while I'm here. Um, I'm trying to think, was there anything else? I did have some, guys, I could have done a second project today, but I'm going to be completely honest. I organized and cleaned up. <laughs> I don't know if I know where it is now. I think I put it away too soon. But I'm so happy with this card. I really am. These dies are just so adorable. And um, just to reiterate, the link for this, uh, both in the US and UK, is available in the description bar of this video. So if you've enjoyed it, if you want to just take a peek at what's available, both this or anything else on Tonic, uh, at Tonic Studios, I'm sorry, then you can go ahead and click that link. See, see if there's anything there that interests you. There are some amazing sales that happen, so if today's not the day, just remember that on Fridays, and today's Thursday, so tomorrow, you may want to take a peek at what is available. They're doing some fun sales on Fridays, and there are um, some really wonderful paper bundles. Um, I think the paper bundle from last week might still be available if i'm not mistaken also if you want to take advantage of the sales to get if you need a media mat i don't know if you guys are familiar with this but i had that same mat that i kind of moved away on um, my stamp platform and you guys saw it. i didn't use it because it was yucky i hadn't cleaned it but it does clean really easily this one is 14 by 14 and it is on sale right now for $5.99 on the Tonic US site. Guys, this is huge and you can cut it down, which is why I just showed you the one I have on my uh, stamp platform. So if you need a surface onto which you can get super messy or you can heat, you know, do heat embossing, this is perfect for that. And it won't slip from the background because it will get, you know, kind of stuck to the background, but you can peel it off super easy um so that is a wonderful wonderful um you know just piece of the equipment that you need when you're doing your crafting because eventually you're gonna catch on to the fact that it's a lot more fun for instance if you want to get out your messy items and do um, all of your spraying at once all of your nouveau at once you know if i weren't doing a live video and i wanted to make a bunch of these cards what i would do is the same way you guys saw in the beginning and I had all these little cutouts, 
I would have all of my, you know, little cookies in a row and then do all of the painting, all of the inking, all that good stuff, and then go ahead and assemble the card. So, for instance, now to re recreate this would be a whole lot easier with those kinds of tools in, you know, in the stash, if you will. So um, the other thing that uh, I wanted to mention was the paper. So just to quickly mention the different kinds of paper that I use today, I use smooth card for my base. That's what you see here. And it's really, really nice and sturdy. I also used it for this oval. So that way my card has a really good base to it. I used um, classic card. Let me see if I happen to have some here. Da, 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 da. Okay. So classic card, like the one that I used on the cookies here, those adorable little, little cookies. It has a linen weave on one side and it's smooth on the other. So what's cool about that? You can use the, um, that weave as part of your design on your card. Or if you want to stamp, and color you can use the smooth side of it and you'll get an entirely different look and of course that's best for like sentiments if you're going to heat and boss them but that does come in an array of colors the sales right now include a bunch of beautiful colors so let me just show you some of the colors that i grabbed um they're bundled in fact there is a bundle right now that comes with this little pad of card this is double-sided pattern paper and it comes, I can't remember the other colors that come with it, but it's super cute. But there's the ballet pink. I love that color. There's Arctic blue. So if you love doing different colored cards, um, there's, you know, a whole rainbow. This is cornflower blue. This might have come in the bundle that came with this. I can't remember. Um, and I did, I grabbed some sea salt green adorable so if you like that color this paper will match it let me open it so i can show you so this is spring meadow perfect for you know really delicate cards if you see the the little flowers on that it's got that um kind of stitching background there that repeats itself and then this is chevron but very gentle. The other side of that is tiny little leaves. Super cute. There's a striped one. So if you struggle with masculine cards, this is a perfect base for that. The other side of that is little flowers. Super cute. And then this one is gingham. Actually, no, it isn't. These are little circles. Oh my gosh, my eyes saw gingham for a second. Little tiny circles. And then the other side of that is actually <laughs> just like that stencil that I showed you guys. That is so funny. So the same stencil shape you see here is actually on that paper. I think that's super cool. Hello. Are you live? Yes, I am. Hi, everybody. So Mr. Paints and Glitter is home. <laughs> And then there's also pearlescent paper, guys. That's what I use for the background here. Awesome, Melissa. Yes, it did come with a mark. Okay, so thank you for telling me that. Because it did come with, it was, I believe, these three. Black Currant, Sugar Plum, and Spring Lilac. I'm almost positive those are the three colors that it came with. Actually, I can double check real quick. Um... It came like this. Yeah, I'm almost positive. These were the three. Yep. So it came with Spring Lilac, Sugar Plum, and Black Currant. And those colors are gorgeous. And yes, there are papers to match those pens. And there's also drops that will match those pens. So if you're all about monochromatic or you just like to have those colors on hand and you want to make sure that it matches your card, then you're going to be able to do that. Doesn't come with spring metal. So then that was different bundle. But thank you, Melissa, because I know that that was a bundle that I grabbed. 
um, because all of this came, <laughs> all of this came in one box. I got these of course. Thank you. I got uh, sandwiches from Cabela's. Ooh la la. I'm um, gonna go get some creamer. I didn't realize we're out of creamer. My <laughs> husband's doing a grocery list since I'm doing a live video. <laughs> but let me show you guys. This is, um, and I'm just showing you the colors available because they're so beautiful. Um, this paper I don't think has sold out yet. <laughs> um, so yes, Maria, that's the, the cool thing. And thank you for mentioning that. Um, the kits are wonderful because they introduce you to all of that's, you know, what's available. For instance, if you've never worked with a pearlescent card, what they, uh, Tonic Studios tries to do is that in every kit, there is intentionally a variety of different textures in the paper. And that really kind of wakes you up to the possibilities of how different you can make your items look. Because for instance, here, this case in point, I use three colors of mirror card just on the, no, I take that back. I used four. This is a mirror card, this one here with that soft rose. And then there are three other shades just on that cake. Then there's that same gold on the perimeter of that jar. And so you maybe are seeing similar colors, but you're seeing them in different textures and that keeps your eye moving along the page or the card. So if you maybe don't have a lot of supplies, um, what I re would recommend is that if you go to pick up new supplies for your craft stash, that maybe you pick them up in a different style of paper. So say you typically always gravitate to the same kind of paper or, or colors, I'm sorry. Say your colors are always the blues, like you're, that's just who you are. You're a blue girl, you love your blues. Then try to pick up a blue that maybe is, for instance, let me show you. This is blue cashmere. Look at that. It's super rich, super beautiful. And then that is entirely different from the texture of the classic card. So you can emboss this, you can spray onto it, you can stencil it, all that good stuff, but it's going to give you an entirely different look than if you always just keep the basic style of paper. Uh, and I hope that make, makes sense. But the same goes for red. I mean, never in my life did I think I'd be using a red like this because I'm not a red, you know, person. However, let me show you the effect of just uh, dry embossing on that kind of paper. Okay, just to, you know, reiterate the point, right? So see this? You may have seen this in a previous video. I did this for Tonic back in, uh, gosh, I don't remember now. Was it last summer? <laughs> yeah, I think it was, they released this uh, like Christmas in July or something like that, or maybe it was June. By the way, no, is it this kit? When they did the sale, I think they re-released the, no, this wasn't one. No, no, this was from the birthday sale. I take it back. There's a Christmas kit that I think they re-released that was on sale, like super cheap. I couldn't believe it. Anyway, but all of this was that red paper and it was dry embossed. And if you see, it just kind of elevates that project. There's not a lot of it being used here, but you don't need a lot of it. And that's what's really cool about, you know, switching up the papers. The same goes for here. This is brown paper, but it's pearlescent. You know, this is gold paper, but it's glitter, you know, that, that sort of thing. So, hello, Carolyn. Thank you so much for being here. Guys, meet Carolyn. Carolyn is an amazing crafter. She does shabby chic. If you're into shabby chic, you, oh my gosh, you need to look at her channel. <laughs> um, so, along, along the lines of, you know, to stress that point, here's red paper again right but then it's it's a little bit different because of the fact that nuvo was added to it so the kind of paper that you use for instance for these flowers i could have used pearlescent red paper 
because I was going to use them in a more 3D style, I did go with the thicker paper, which is the uh, classic card. But you could easily, you know, just recreate the same project with a different style of paper. You're going to get a different effect. The, cla the base of this is classic card, but then the little layer there is um, mirror card. So, of course, I could have just used a plain green paper, but just that added little bit of shine just makes, you know, makes your project look a little bit more special. In my personal opinion, I just, you know, wanted to let you guys know I really love it. I think it changes your, you know, like craft game <laughs> to switch it up a little bit and, you know, just throw a little different things at it. It's a lot of fun. So... Um, yes, if, if you missed that kit, which that was the big, like, wow, wow kit, right, of, of 2023, my recommendation is if you don't like how that feels, try, try, try to be a kit subscriber if you can, because every kit has its little, you know, special things in it, and because the dies are exclusive to that kit, they may not re-release them. Now, this week they did uh, re-release the little um, critters, <laughs> which I found to be really astounding that they did that. But I'm really excited for everybody because these little guys came in a kit and they just uh, released them again. Now they come in a bundle with the stamps, which is really fun and you can also get them in a bundle with a little box that has a closure with a butterfly which is adorable i don't have that otherwise i would show you a sample but again my links are in the description bar of the video if you want to take a look and see if there's anything there that interests you i can quickly show you the other little um guys that come with it which is the, the little alligator i just love it <laughs> Oh, these were just so cute. Um, so the stamp set does come with that O snap. Um, with, oh, okay. Oh, awesome. Mandy, you're going to love it. And um, if you guys want to, I can show you those projects again because I just had so much fun uh, making the little bunny. And the, I could, I was, in fact, I was giggling in the video and I wasn't doing that intentionally. It was just that I couldn't stop laughing while I was making it because it kept like rolling around and stuff like that. And I was like, this bunny was it still. Um, but it was a lot of fun. Yes, Maria. So you can get them individually, you can get them with the stamp. Or you can get them as a bundle with the little box. And they're so, so cute. I mean, look at the little sloth. And, of course, I, ma I made it a little girly sloth. So I gave her a little flower there. Now, um, when they came with the kit, I did not use all of the papers that were in the kit. Because I just had this gorgeous paper and I just could not help myself. So I did make the mini album. But you might want to take a look at the videos of the other girls from the design team they made some fabulous fabulous cards and then of course because it got re-released that there are new samples to look at and every single one is just absolutely amazing there was one made um i want to say her name is anka she's in the german team oh my gosh she made such a gorgeous card so be sure to watch that and um you know you can just have fun so there's the koala yeah i hadn't mentioned the koala the little frog super cute if you like to make kinetic cards these are perfect little creatures for that if you like to make birthday cards punny cards um these are wonderful because of the little stamps for instance here's you know one of them the shallow so cute so you can just make a little card like that you don't have to make it super big and elaborate and super easy just something like that would brighten someone's day, right? And then I did finish that off with the other little panda. I just thought it was so cute. And then Ruth did a video where she flipped the panda on the other side. Um, and she shows you how to do that with the same die set, which I thought was super clever, of course. Um, so, yeah. And then the Easter one, let me just show you that. Because if you have any questions, of course, you know, you can ask. 
And I'm gonna try to lower my voice because I speak so loud, guys. <laughs> so sorry. I do get loud. I project my voice. Okay, let me set this aside. But you get to see how fun this all is, right? No. <laughs> I'm not I'm not in uh oh I'm not of the tradition of doing Easter eggs and Easter bunnies and all of that because of my uh, Christian beliefs. However, I did enjoy this set. And what I did is that I implemented, you know, what I believe in. So I think that that's what's so wonderful about these kits is that you inject into it, of course, what you like. And so for me, I just thought, okay, then what's fun about it is that I can use two sides that are the same size and create a little bit of a different box because of course you can create the one that's in the shape of the little egg and you can decorate all the sides it comes with everything you're going to absolutely enjoy it um but I got a little more kind of creative with it and I did the little banner um because I as I explained in the video I um celebrate resurrection Sunday so I thought this would be perfect for my table and so it says he is risen. So the little banner does come with the die set. However, it doesn't come with all the letters. But if you saw the release video, then you already know, as Karen mentioned there, that you can use stickers. You can use little letters that are already maybe printed on a page and you can cut those out with the little triangle. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat is dry. Bear with me. <clears throat> And so that way you can personalize your project as well. Oh, that's awesome, Maria. Yeah, so there's, again, how I, the way I attached them was with the little pieces of acetate on the side. But you know what I got to thinking? Had I planned this a little bit differently, I would have cut the little slits on the side of the actual panel so then feed that acetate to the inside of the box and I would have liked it a little bit more but you know hindsight is 2020 <laughs> but you know you just use your creativity make the things the way you want them you know so okay so Mandy's saying uh you miss the little critters so happy that they're selling the okay awesome yeah and then when shopping Oh, thank you so much, Carolyn. Thank you. Yes, and that's what I was thinking, Melissa. I was thinking of the empty tomb, and that's why I did this. I was actually looking for dyes that would give that kind of element to this. Um, but no matter how hard I looked in the things that I have, I was like, I can't find anything that that looks like that. But that's exactly what I was thinking here. So what I put was, uh, he's not here, he is risen. And then I put the sunshine with the uh, three little crosses. And, you know, they're meant to look like crosses anyway. And so that opens up like so. And that's the paper that I use on the inside there too. Um, which I think this was a faith-inspired paper, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it is. Um, I just can't remember who makes it. So I apologize that I don't know that. But this is from the, the rainbow box. Came with that little sun. Um, so that's where I implemented that. But that's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, okay, the empty tomb. That's what this will represent. And, you know, texture paste. Oh, Melissa, that's a great idea. Absolutely. Because you could do it on the outside, too. I just was thinking, okay, so if you don't know Bible stories, if you're not familiarized with the Bible, when Jesus resurrects and he is no longer in the tomb, the first person to see him in, in the garden is Mary. And so that's why I put the little flowers on top here, um, because she's looking for him. She's, you know, of course, beside herself thinking you know, the, the tomb must have been robbed and all that. You can read it uh, in the New Testament. It's a it's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> but that's what my faith is, you know, founded on. So that, of course, is so, so special to me. And I wanted to convey that in these projects. And, you know, but of course, you got to love the little chicky. <laughs> um, 
so yeah you can you can really really do so much with these um and you can share things like that for instance i know i can share my faith in so many different ways and this is just one of them you know paper crafting can be absolutely a part of that and that's you know i'm super happy to be able to do that so um you know whatever way that you know you convey your love and the things that you enjoy with other people i think is so very personal to who you are for me of course paper crafting is a huge part of that so it makes it brings me joy and happiness to be able to do that and i hope that you guys are you know feel that when you watch my videos that's exactly what i'm doing i'm sharing a little piece of me this is just the kind of language that i'm using to do so so um um Oh, okay. Yes, Melissa, to the center of these flowers. Great question. What I did here was that I used some glaze medium and I put it on the centers and then I took, I'm going to show you the glitter because it's a tonic glitter. Um, I want to say, wait, where is it? <laughs> it's somewhere in this room. Okay, I don't know if I know where the glitter is right this second, because sometimes... Oh, I found it. Found it. I use Sunny Side Glitter. It is the perfect color, like, orangey, yellow, I don't know. So I think I first col... Yes, I first colored it. I don't recall which marker I used, but I first colored the paper. And this is the classic card in um, white... Is it white or is it ivory? <laughs> I want to say it's white. I don't know. It might be ivory. Um, so I colored the paper in yellow. Then I put the glaze medium. And then I sprinkled the um, the sunny side glitter on there. And somehow I got it so that it wouldn't go in, on the entire thing. But I don't remember how I did that. <laughs> I have no recollection of how I avoided part of that flower center. Huh. I don't even know. And then these little flowers here that look like little pom-poms, this is all, by the way, from the, um, no, it isn't. These, these little yellow centered flowers are from the Blooming Bouquet, I want to say. Oh my gosh, what are the other ones? I should have written it down. These are all tonic dyes. I don't remember where these little flowers are from now. <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> the little green ones. But yes, glaze medium. Um, okay. I'm going to give you a little inside tip. <laughs> Don't buy the brand name glaze medium because they're ripping you off and they're charging you $9 a bottle for something that's around this size. Okay. And I'm not going to say who makes it. I'm not going to name names. But he's quite famous and makes a lot of money and I think that's fine and good. If you if you're you know famous in what you do and you do well, God bless you. But <laughs> um oh no what no worries, Mandy. Thank you so much for having been here. You have a blessed evening. Um what I do is that I go to uh, an art supply store or you can go to Michael's if you live in the United States, I think maybe Hobby Lobby, I don't know. Uh, and I get Liquitex. This is meant to cover a canvas when you're done painting it so that it maintains the integrity of your painting and it makes it shiny. Um, so what I do is I pour some of this and it says there gloss, medium and varnish, right? This comes in a matte finish, it comes in glossy finish, and it's useful for adhering paper. If you do mixed media, it's useful for finishing off, you know, a glaze on a card. It will look like you put clear Nouveau drops on anything. So if you want to make flowers, you want it to look like it's got little raindrops on there, just leave a little drop of glaze medium and you will have your little raindrop on there, okay? So... If you use this tip, just let people know. I told you about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, Melissa, you do know the guy. <laughs> so yeah, but they're charging you $9 for an ounce. I don't think so, honey. <laughs> this is, how many ounces is this? This is 473 mLs. So 
I think this is 10, 8 to 10 ounces. Somebody from the UK let me know. But yeah, and it's, I think I paid maybe, maybe $12 for this. So yeah, you have to look at the, the um, art aisles when you go to your stores. And, um, oh yes, oh, always, always, Maria. I, I do not like to pay full price for anything if I don't have to. And when, um, oh, and by the way, I just put it in a, a little quilling tool. This is meant for, you know, for quilling. And it's got that little needle nose tip. The same as, you know, the glue bottles from, from Tonic. And then that way I can just, you know, apply it where I need to. And then these little bottles, I just get it, uh, get them on Amazon. You can search um, quilling bottles and that way you can do that. And I used to do this with my adhesive as well before I got, you know, the, um, the Nuvo bottles. But yeah, that's about it. Yeah, it's, a, it's around 8 to 10 ounces. And so it'll last you a really long time because you don't really need a whole lot. But it's excellent if you're applying glitter because now... You know, a little bit flakes off, but if I really want to protect this, I can go over it with even more and it'll encapsulate it. And that's super cool, you know. So, and I don't know if I showed you guys the inside of the bunny. It's got, it's got a little carrot. He only ate three carrots. <laughs> but yeah, just to show you guys that you can open and close those and you can get the magnets from Tonic as well. Um... No, no, uh, Carolyn, it's not Diamond Glaze. And that's what I'm meaning is that there are other brands out there and they're called things like Diamond Glaze and all the other glazes. But um, if you look at the, you know, like the ingredients, if you will, it's the same thing. <laughs> it's a glaze medium. And if you, if you look at the brand Liquitex and the other brand is... Um, um, I'm trying to think, what's the other one that I use? Oh, what's the other one? I'm trying to think, bear with me. Hold on a second. Okay, no, my drawer is too far, far away, so I'm not going to walk away right now. But, you know, this brand, and there's another brand that sells, like, acrylics and watercolors and stuff like that. Um, you can look at their, their fluid mediums, and you're going to find a fantastic array of you know choices there for for that you can use in paper crafting i've been doing it for years and you know works every single time um and you get the same finishes as the drops and stuff like that so if you even want to venture into that and add your own little mica powders and stuff like that you can have a lot of fun so um and yep texture paste same thing same thing. So, for instance, those pans of paint that sometimes you have or chalk uh, mediums that sometimes are so old and you're like, what do I do with this? I don't know. Um, let me show you. Like, say, okay, so this is like 80 years old. <laughs> so I know that I don't have to throw this out because I can create my own medium out of this. If I want to just empty out one of those little pans and crush it. Um, then I can add that to a, gla a glaze medium or any other kind of medium and then just make my own little paste. So, yeah. Yes, it's a, it's really great. It's a lot of fun. But I think that's, I'm going to end this video here. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to those of you who have joined me. Again, we use this gorgeous dye and stencil set that you can get from Tonic Studios. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. This was the Bountiful Bell Jar Dye and Stencil Set. Super adorable. And tomorrow, you may want to take a look at the page. Go ahead and click my links today. You don't have to shop, but then tomorrow you can go back if you'd like to. And if you see some paper bundles, um, if you want to watch the Facebook Live in the morning that Tonic Studios does, then there may be a special code or you might want to sign up on the web page to receive uh, special texts and they will alert you to any new codes that you may want to use while you're shopping. You're very, very welcome. It's always a joy and as I always say, I hope that you can be inspired and be blessed and thank you so much for being here with me guys. Ciao, ciao.